Hey everyone, it's Denise, and here is your Embroidery Thread 101 for those of you that are new to this. There's going to be two kinds that you find, especially at Joann's or Hobby Lobby, any place that you're going to go to, and that's DMC Embroidery Floss and the DMC Pearl Cotton. The difference is that the DMC Floss is six strands very loosely twisted together so they come apart, and the DMC Pearl Cotton is one strand very tightly twisted together so it has little bumps along it, kind of like pearls. And they're meant, this one's meant to be used individually. The blue one, um, the floss, is meant to be separated into between one and six strands when you use it for embroidery. And so when you get this, you're going to be like, oh, here's the end. If you pull on it, it may or may not. Um, sometimes you're lucky and it'll pull right out of the there, but other times it'll start to knot up on you. So your best bet is probably to go ahead and remove them from their little... Uh, wrappers. But then this one's pretty much in a circle. So if you have some way to either keep it like that, it will unwind. Or you can put it onto some sort of little card. You can buy embroidery floss holders. You can cut up a little cardboard box. I label mine with the name and the uh, color number just for reference later. Um, but you'll want to have some way of making sure that you can keep it from being all tangled up in a mess later. The other thing that's going to make a mess is when you cut this, like I said, you want to use between one and three threads. So say I want to use two threads. And you start to pull them out and you get a big knotted up mess. Um, the trick <laughs> is to just pull one thread at a time. So you're going to take one strand and pull it straight out, and the rest of it's going to untangle. And then you'll pull another strand, and just as many as you need. And then you'll put these back together to go into your needle. This one is tied in a knot, so you're going to need to take that knot out of there before you can even take any of it out of this skein. But this one is kind of twisted in on itself and all looped around. So again, you are going to be able to find a spot where you can unravel it easily, but it's probably not going to pull just in pieces out of these little wrappers very easily at all. They're going to get all knotted up. Um, so again, if you want to wind it onto something else, wind it into a little ball, some other way of keeping track of it as you go along. So here are some other types of threads. We have a silk pearl, a silk pearl thread. Um, this one's like the DMC pearl. You can see those little bumps along there, but this one's like really silky soft, whereas the cotton's a little bit hard. Um, we have one that's a really soft silk stranded, like the floss. This is the linen uh, DMC. It is a little bit slubby, just like linen fabric. And you're going to feel it as you pull it through your fabric. You're going to feel those little tiny bumps on it. It's also rougher, so it doesn't pull through as smoothly. But it has, it has a really nice look to it if you're using the white. Um, it's historically accurate for some types of embroidery. Um, this is the a DMC embroidery cotton. It is also a single strand, um, very smoothly twisted together. This is another of the silk threads. It's a six thread um, stranded silk, but it has a lot more shine than the softer one that I showed you a minute ago. And then this one is a flat silk. It um, is many little tiny pieces of silk, but it's not meant to be divided. It's even though they're very, um, you can see a few strands in there, they're very loosely twisted together and they're just like spider webs. You're not going to separate this, but it's going to lay very smoothly and give a great shine on some types of embroidery. You'll see a lot of this in 18th century embroidery, but um, it does have a learning curve. And since it is like spider webs, it's going to catch on every little rough spot on your fingers. So if this is something you want to try using, I'd recommend um, practicing with something like the standard DMC floss first and then moving on to this once you have the technique down. You'll want to cut a length of thread about 
18 inches long or roughly from your fingertips to your elbow. That'll be a comfortable working length for you. It'll be short enough that you can pull it through the fabric easily and you won't fray the thread in the eye of the needle before you're done using that length of thread, but it won't be so short that you're constantly tying off threads and starting new ones. When it comes time to do your embroidery, you're also going to need to hoop your fabric. So you're going to set it on there and put the other, the outer hoop over it. And you want it to just be very smooth, very flat, and then you'll tighten it. You don't want to pull or tug or stretch it because that's going to cause, right here it's a little tiny bit loose because of when I tightened it, but otherwise you don't want it you don't want to pull it, you don't want to tug it, you don't want to distort anything as you go, and you want it to be just about as tight as a drum. So you might take you a few times to practice that before you get it where you need to go. Okay, and then when you get ready to embroider, I have my needle threaded with two strands of DMC cotton. You never make knots in embroidery. So what we're going to do is go through the fabric and come down down pretty close to it. So you're just going to make a teeny tiny back stitch. So we're going to pull it through most of the way and go back up in about the same place. And it's just a just that one little back stitch. It's really secure. That's not coming out of there, but it's also incredibly flat. Um, there's not a big bump on the back and this little extra bit of thread, um, you can trim it off as you go. It'll get covered up as you go. So you're going to want to make a stitch like this someplace where you're going to cover it up later with another stitch. This would even just be, I mean, even one single stitch in the direction you're going pretty much covers that up. So that's how you'll start and stop your threads. If you want to stop, you'll do the exact same thing on the back, or you can just do a couple little back stitches under threads that you have already um, made. So I hope that answers a few of your questions about embroidery thread. The bit about pulling one thread at a time with embroidery floss is something I did not know in the beginning. I made so many tangled up knots, and I know that little issues like that can be a huge frustration when you're just starting out. So if there's anything else that you run across that you don't understand or just have a question on, please ask. I'm here to make this as simple as possible for you. I don't want you to go through any frustration um, needlessly. I'll be posting stitch videos starting next week, and I am really excited to have you all here. So. Please let me know if you need anything. I am happy to help. Thank you again.